This ring light in front of me is so bright. I'm literally gonna be blind by the end of this. This is why I usually film my videos in daylight or like take all my pictures lately in daylight because ring lights are actually just a major annoyance. So my makeup, I was literally, it's 10 to 10 obviously while I'm filming with a real ring light and I was like, had no makeup on, had no makeup all day and then I sat down to film this and I looked at my camera um, with me with no makeup on and a ring light and I was just like, absolutely not. Which like, uh, I do love myself with no makeup but just with a ring light, it's just very intense. But I will say, I have the bare minimum amount of makeup on and I'm adoring it so I literally I have no foundation on and I literally just have um, what did I put on oh what's that thing <laughs> concealer then I put contour did my eyebrow gel a bit of mascara some blusher some highlighter some eyelashes and then some lips and, like I go back to work tomorrow which is like honestly fucking crazy like oh my god like where did quarantine go I literally feel like I'm finished my summer holidays like going back to school it's a weird feeling I washed all my sheets today I washed all my clothes today I want to have like also my family are still in like the zoom quiz phase of lockdown so that's all the screaming downstairs and I keep getting sidetracked from everything I'm saying every time I hear screaming so I'm actually really sorry going back to work tomorrow I think this is gonna be my like everyday work makeup look because it's simple it's quick it's easy it's still cute anyway getting into today's video I had a few things planned and um, I have one video which I still really want to do um, but it's just awfully time-consuming and today I just like needed today to like prepare to go back to work back to school so I just thought obviously you know I haven't got the rest of the week now to create content and have all this extra time so I thought what's quick what's easy so I just stuck up a little question box on my Instagram for y'all to ask me some questions and I actually got some pretty good ones so yeah I'll start at the bottom someone said how do you stay motivated doing daily workouts I always talk about this literally the thing that keeps me motivated to do literally anything is how I'll feel afterwards and that especially goes for workouts because like I actually very rarely wake up and I'm like I want to work out today Woo! like that just doesn't really happen I don't maybe that does happen for some people I feel like it does happen some days but like 80% of days I'm like will I skip it and then I'm like, no bitch, think of the end goal. The end goal and how you'll feel afterwards. Yeah, again, and I've said this on some of my IGTVs, do it from a place of love. So I feel like I used to literally be like, oh, I have to work out or I'll be fat. For me now, I just kind of base it all around like feelings. And I think like, wanting to feel good co comes from a place of self-love so and like I don't mean feel skinny or like feel good by by saying feeling good I mean just like I always feel more productive more focused all of that jazz after I do a workout so like knowing that I'll feel all of those things and obviously the bod that comes with it gets me motivated so that's pretty much how I say motivated also having the shreddy app has helped me so much throughout lockdown and I'm definitely gonna keep it because I do feel like it'll help me even not in lockdown so shreddy app like so or even if you don't want to get an app just plan out your workouts so that you can even write them down everyone that you want to do so that you can tick them off I'd say that with anything that you want to stay motivated for have a to-do list tick shit off how many times have you dyed your hair countless times like I've been getting highlights in my hair since I was probably about 12 which is like actually probably younger I've been dyeing my hair for a very long time and then when I hit my teens I didn't bleach it until I was maybe about 16 17 and then god until I went on my bleach ban my color ban until I was 21 I like so from 16 to 21 it was bleached and like had a color in it like constantly like that was just my hair like always had a color in it so for like six years that was I can't do math five years and then I didn't dye or bleach my hair for oh my god was it two I think it was two years and then I just started putting color in it again before Christmas uh, and I've oh god I've dyed it a good few times since then but I think like colors like this are actually grand for your hair so just be weary of bleach is all I would say my favorite what are your favorite aesthetics um god I actually don't have an answer for that I love like um Hawaii but I also love like grunge and like e-girly there's all these new this new lingo for aesthetics like I'm more down with the tone gals from like 2015 or some 2015 yeah that was my era so no but kawaii like i love street style as well i literally can't answer this it's too hard someone said what side of tick tock are you on i don't really know what that means what side what 
so I 100% realise I'm showing my old age with this, but I've actually spent a lot more time on TikTok again this week. And I've seen it a lot in comments, but I still don't really know what it means, so. Fave Irish vintage shop. Oh, fave vintage shops, preferably Irish. So I'll do all my Irish ones first. So obviously I'm a bit biased because I work for Nine Crows, for Nine Crows. But even before I worked there, that was always one of my faves. I always just have the most unique, unreal pieces. And then I love Dublin Vintage Factory. That's great for like a bargain. I do feel like in kilo shops, and it's the same with the Nine Crows thrift shop, you do have to look a little bit more, but you're obviously getting the clothes a lot cheaper. I think it's good, like those kind of shops are good for like jeans um, and like crew necks and flannel shirts and things like that. If you want something more specific, the likes of Nine Crows, Lucy's Lounge, those kind of ones, even Tola Vintage, their main shop would be better for that. And then the Tola Vintage Kilo shop is great as well. Ah, I'm back in town tomorrow, I'm literally up. I'm so excited to have a browse. You don't even understand. But also Irish vintage shops, the Wild Era online, Sugar and Spice, uh, vintage on Depop. Actually, Molly Parsons started up a vintage shop on Depop, so check that out as well. There's actually, yeah, there's a lot of good vintage shops in town and online in Ireland. Spice Vintage in Limerick is another online one. And then obviously all the charity shops. My favourite like row of charity shops for me anyway is although they're a little bit more pricey i like the georgia street charity shops because when i'm in town especially because i work in temple bar i just kind of run across on my lunch and i'm like what can we find they can be a little bit pricier though so and then um abroad fave vintage shops i absolutely love 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 um rocket vintage in london and i oh, i have to say like their shop was my favorite shop on brick lane like absolutely it is in brick lane isn't it yeah it's brick lane um but their shop was my favorite one and there were so many but that was the only one where like i went in and i was like oh my god like what the hell but there's oh, brick lane in general there's so many cool shops and they have a lot of designery vintage bits in some of them which was like really cool and then depop abroad i got a really cool skirt off tanny's vintage on depop oh my god there's so many cool depop shops like abroad as well so maybe i'll just leave a few in the description or something because i actually never remember depop depoppers names which is like probably bad of me but where are those queen hard hoops from I'll actually show you the ones I think. That took so much longer than it should have. Also, who am I in my Lululemons? I literally am never that bitch that wears gym gear, like just lounging. I'm normally a tracksuit kind of gal. And then I just wear my gym gear for like actually exercising. But these, my mom bought me these for my birthday and I swear to God, it's made me be like, I think I now need to actually invest in more expensive gym gear. I'm waiting for Tala, Grace Beverly's brand to redraw. Re <laughs> I had sushi for dinner and I just actually felt like it was about to come back up. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I'm waiting for Tala to restock because I just love Grace Beverly. I just honestly. So back to the question. These are the earrings I think you're talking about. Can we see? Yeah, that's um. I actually broke one of them. It's easily fixable. Like this just detached off the thing. I think it got caught in my wig when I was drunk in my two week destructive, self-destructive phase there two weeks ago. Um, But now that I'm out of that phase, I feel like I can fix it. So I will fix it. But where did I get them? Actually, they're from Pennies. I finished work at seven one night. I left at like five to seven because I had to go to my friends leaving drinks i was like getting ready and work and i was like oh my god i've no earrings and i was so annoyed because i just don't really go anywhere without jewelry i don't even know why i didn't just have earrings in in work sometimes i don't because i actually have quite sensitive ears so i think i must have just forgot or whatever that day but i was like no like i'm not going for drinks with no earrings and pennies was open i'm like strolling around with my earphones in because i thought it was open till eight o'clock and i was literally like hello like strolling around like and i just like got a tap on the shoulder and he was like, we're closing you have to leave and i was like oh okay i'm really sorry like big massive security guard and i was just like yeah i'm just gonna buy these earrings and they were literally four euro and pennies i don't know if they still have them because that was like in that was before i went to fashion weeks so that was probably like january february so they probably don't still have them but they were like one of my best finds ever and i actually think they look way more expensive than pennies what is your biggest achievement today i saw this come, this question come in earlier and i was like i don't have any achievements and then I was just like, that is so stupid. And I was like, I definitely have achievements. I guess I feel like I just have so much more that I want to achieve that my brain is instantly just like achievements. 
You don't know what they are, bitch. But no, I think I would have to probably say, like, I want to say my degree because that's obviously a big achievement. Like, I have an honours level A bachelor's degree, which is, like, obviously great. But, like, it's also in communications, which, like... <laughs> isn't that hard to get so i actually i don't know this is so hard i also think though like the fact i did my leaving sir is a huge achievement because i literally was just like no like i'm not i actually physically cannot do this like i just and then obviously i missed so much time to fifth year that i was just like no like i'm actually just not doing my leaving cert and like i actually know people who like went through similar shit as me who like actually didn't do their leaving cert so i'm like okay like i think the fact i have a really good education is a huge achievement for me so <laughs> yeah i'm trying to think of more i guess i don't know everything i'm doing at the moment i guess is an achievement like as stupid as it sounds i guess like you know when i started my instagram and stuff like that i was always like oh i want to work with brands i want to get paid posts like i want to have 10,000 followers um and i've achieved all of those things i guess yeah i guess it's just hard to say you've achieved things when there's still so much more you want to achieve but yeah i actually yeah i guess i've achieved a lot of things so <laughs> hard question what motivates you in life what motivates me in life guys are really going in there with the questions um honestly i think i think it's what actually motivates me is just not wanting to be ordinary that sounds so ridiculous uh, i'm like girl can you hear yourself everyone's probably just like clicking off right now but no not that i like i just feel like like i think everyone has a purpose you know everyone was sent here with a mission but it's like not everybody finds out what their mission is and i still don't really know what my mission is and you know yesterday i actually watched beyonce's class of 2020 speech and she was like you know i'm always a work in progress and i i'm always growing and i was just like okay Hey, that is me I'm always a work in progress because I do I think to some extent know my purpose and know that it's not to just have a Monday to Friday nine to five and complain on the weekdays waiting for the weekends like and working in an office is just unless it's my office that I've built and I have a cool team of people like answering phones all day answering emails to you know something that like I don't actually care about is like my worst nightmare so I think what motivates me is just not wanting wanting i can't deal with them but not wanting that kind of lifestyle that sounds so mean because some people are happy in that but it's just like i just i don't know i just want i just want to be able to do what i love as my career and as a, as a way to support myself and my family and buy a house and have a family so i guess that's what motivates me is just wanting to be able to do what i love every day and get paid for it and call it my career so yeah that's it i wouldn't say i'm even like money driven or well i am because everyone wants to be money driven but like i'm not like oh my god i have to be stinking filthy rich i just want to be like you know be able to just do shit without being like oh how much is this gonna cost so yeah but i guess i don't know for me like fulfillment and like being like content and yeah just fulfillment i guess and overall life purpose and happiness is just what motivates me and i think what's fulfilling for me is being able to do something i love full time that's it that's it for that one would you ever do a vlog day video like a morning routine i'm gonna see how my morning routines go when I'm back in work and then I'll see but also like I don't know maybe I'll do one on one of my days off or something because for quarantine I actually had a really good morning routine I kind of lost it the last like week which is so typical the week before I go back to work I haven't been sleeping until like 4 a.m and then getting up at like 10 or 11 and just like being like a blah and not being able to move until 12 and then my morning routine starts at 12 so classic that that happened the week I have to go back to work and actually get up earlier because I've literally throughout quarantine been getting up at eight or nine and of course the one week i need it to be like that i can't do it but anyway yeah i probably will do that i have a few day vlogs and stuff on my channel already but um yeah i'll probably do the uh one that you said uh favorite thing about being a gemini okay i was actually thinking about this one today because i obviously was like seeing questions as they were coming in and i was like what is my favorite thing about being a gemini and then when i was walking to the shop i was listening to princess nokia coincidentally gemini and i was like yo this bitch just put into words 
everything I fucking love about being in Gemini. There's so many cool celebrities that are Gemini's, like Princess Nokia herself, Kanye West, uh, Lauren Hill, Boy George. Like there is so many cool creative people that are Gemini's and I think that's a big part of being Gemini and also like free spirit, creativity and just, yeah, I don't know. Like also I think like being a Gemini, you can be a real social butterfly, but you can also be a real introvert as well. Like you're either one or the other. Cause I guess that's the twins side of things so one day I could be like totally like extroverted the next day I'm like crying like don't speak to me so yeah I know I think just being completely free-spirited which I really think I am honestly just listen to Princess Nokia and Gemini that is everything I love about being a Gemini we are the best star sign and everyone hates us and literally she says that in the song it's so funny i was like i love this song so much someone said will you do a what i eat in a day during lockdown i actually have one on my channel from a few weeks ago um unless i privatized it i don't think i did i privatized a lot of my videos recently though because i was like oh my god well, i actually don't really have anymore so yeah but i will maybe just do another what i eat in a day because i'm not in lockdown anymore so <laughs> what's your process for moon rituals i guess i don't know um i actually didn't do one this month because it was Rihanna's birthday and we were celebrating and then on the last day of the full moon we were hungover um but what do I do so on a new moon I'll normally just write like a list of new goals that I have um kind of that month or whatever and just like things I want to achieve um I'll write like manifestations and stuff like that in a full moon what I'll normally do is write a list of things that I want to let go of and burn them and then I normally just meditate under the moon I need to actually get some new crystals I used to have a good few and I seem to have lost them I also need to buy a new bulb from my Himalayan salt lamp because maybe that's why my sleeping pattern has gone so whack even though it's gone been gone for like months and I just haven't bought a new one I think it went literally just as lockdown began and I was like oh I need to buy a new bulb and then this shit happened so yeah maybe I'll buy one of those in town this week but I also yeah I just need to get new crystals because I think meditating under the moon with your crystals either on your body or around you or in the bath is a great thing to do as well but also, yeah, just burning things you want to let go of, uh, let, writing new goals and shit like that is my moon ritual, I guess. How to deal with self-doubt. So I think for this one, it's obviously kind of a tough one, but I think it's something we all go through. Like I literally go through phases of self-doubt like five times a week and there's seven days in a week. I think we all have it, but I think, and I know I rave about journaling all the time, but journaling, write about your self-doubt, but then also perhaps write about the things that you don't doubt about. About yourself because then it's kind of just turning it around also i would say talk to friends or family members that you know believe in you i wouldn't go to people who have a tendency to doubt you because then it could kind of just add to your doubt but i also think a lot of our self-doubt can kind of come from comparisons or like other things that we've heard from other people about ourselves so i guess i don't know just be kind to yourself remember that like everything is a journey and a process and nothing to be honest if you want something as long as you're doubting yourself you're not going to achieve it so set your mind to something start with like small goals towards something and then like you know small goals can kind of break down bigger goals into more achievable ones in terms of goals it would be that but self-doubt in terms of yourself I would say definitely try and not compare yourself to other people so if that means spending less time on social media do that getting out like into nature meditating meditating, journaling, all of these things. I think meditation is a great one as well because it allows you to actually sit with your thoughts and process them and try to understand why you're feeling them as opposed to just being like, oh. I actually would really highly recommend this book for self-doubt, Good Vibes, Good Life by Vex King. There's a lot about kind of self-doubt and goals and there's even a story about a guy in it who never believed he could run or he had this idea for a great business, never believed he could do it or like didn't think he'd have the financial stability until he was fired from his job that he had financial stability from and then he had no choice but to start the business and he actually I think I became a millionaire from it. So I'd recommend this book. It kind of talks a lot about self-doubt and you know the things that contribute to it, like external factors, like people around you, societal factors, all of those things. I actually just think 
they should make you read this in schools because it's incredible. I'm probably gonna read it like five more times in the next year. How do you make a living? Uh, streams of income and advice for creative. Creatives, so obviously I'm back to work tomorrow. That has been my source of income for the past year and a half now, other than COVID-19. But um, I work in Nine Crows in town, so vintage shop, right time. And then I guess I get money, the tiniest amount of money from YouTube, like not a lot, like at all. And then I'd get like some paid Instagram posts. And then I have a few affiliate programs and stuff like that. I don't make loads of money off of the affiliate stuff or like the paid posts but it's a nice little side income to have and hopefully you know as my following grows I can grow that and then I have a little project which I'm working on and hoping I can bring out soon and um, which will be another source of income and then I also have a depop so when I'm bored of my clothes I just sell them um, I'm trying to think do I have anything else I don't know I think that's it I think that's it but um it's nice having a few different incomes because I mean why wouldn't it be but it's also yeah it's just like you know you could get like today I got an affiliate thing paid and I was like oh shit cool that's money that I wasn't expecting so it's nice to have a few different things like coming in at once so that's how I make my money <laughs> And then advice for creatives, similarly to the self-doubt thing, just keep going, keep creating. And I know it's hard, like, especially when I feel like nowadays everything's so based on numbers and like followers and likes. Um, and it can be really disheartening when like you're losing followers or your picture didn't get as many likes as you would have hoped. Um, and you've put all this time into creating something and then it's maybe not received the way you had hoped. But I would just say keep creating, have the self-belief. Like if, if you don't believe in yourself, no one else is going to believe in you. So keep believing in yourself, keep creating things. And I honestly just think as long as you have the self-belief there, like it'll eventually happen. So yeah, get your friends to share, get your family to share, try and meet people within the same lane, collaborate with other people. And this, this is any kind of art, not just social media but even like styling and stuff like collaborate with different people like just make shit and do it with other people because then it reaches more people and then just try and get people to share your shit so i think that's pretty much it i hope you've enjoyed i don't really have anything else to say so i hope you enjoyed and if you aren't already please be sure to hit subscribe i'm gonna try to try and keep my youtube consistency game strong so yeah thanks bye